I'm standing on the sidewalk. No, I'm asking you the evidence of crime. How is it? How, Listen, this is your last chance. Uh, uh, you don't need to ask me. I'm telling you. I have a question. I don't have how, that. how is Redding? How is, how is Redding on the sidewalk? Get off! So, can you please describe where in the video I was saying it's just chalk? Well, it was the first thing out of your mouth, something about chalk. I, is it correct that I asked, I said in the form of a question, get off the chalk, with a reflection at the end? Does you, that you appear know, to it, be a question to you? It may have been. So, you claim that I struggled when you were attempting to arrest me. Yes. Could you please describe how I struggled? Yeah, I went to grab your wrist and you pulled your wrist away. Okay. Um, so you stated that I um, was falling down and trying to wiggle my arms away as that was happening as part of the struggle? Yeah, in the second part of the video, yes. Before it starts, um, I would like to ask you if you would um, watch and see if it appears that I am falling down and trying to wiggle my arms away, or if I'm falling down and my arms are being held back by you and another officer. the camera out of my lap and do something uh, with it. Okay. Did you notice whether it appeared that I was falling to the ground and trying to pull my arms away at the same time, or if I was falling to the ground and being slowly lowered by you and another officer. Yeah, as I had testified to before, um, you were placed on the ground. So yeah, as I went to grab you and you pulled away, other officers stepped in and you were struggling because that's why your hands were behind your back because I had grabbed on for you to put your hands behind your back and you were struggling to get away and we lowered you to the ground. Was I attempting to run or, yeah, was I attempting to run away from you? No. Was I attempting to use force to stop you from arresting me? Yes. How long did I delay the arrest? Um, no, it was one continuous moment in time. I delayed the arrest for one continuous moment in time? No, the arrest is one continuous moment. The fact that you're resisting and struggling is all part of the arrest. At a previous hearing, you stated that I delayed the arrest by one second. Is that accurate? I don't. My recollection of that is that we were talking about the time before you were placed under arrest. That, that is not accurate. That's my memory. Okay, so you do not recall saying that I delayed the arrest by one second? Again, I remember in another hearing, we talked about the time lapse between you were told you were under arrest and the time that you were physically engaged in the arrest. Okay. At the previous hearing, you um, testified that the, t the when I struggled was during the three or so seconds between the first video ending and the second video beginning. How is it that now the struggling 
has magically appeared on video? I don't understand that question. Last time that we had a hearing, you testified that the, when I struggled, it was not caught on video. It was in the three seconds or so between the first video ending and the second video beginning that I struggled. No, my memory of that is you asked about what happened um, from the time that I grabbed your wrist. And if you paid, if you notice on the first video, as soon as I go to grab your wrist, the phone um, tilts sideways and then it goes white or blank. And then somebody filming, um, actually from right outside of this building, caught this part. So you just testified that I was still struggling while you were, um, while I was on the ground, you were trying to put handcuffs on me. Yes. I would like you to please show where I am struggling while I'm lying on the ground, okay? You move it up in the top left. I think that'll be good. Can you grab the camera out of my lap and do something uh, with it? Actually, I remember um, having trouble handcuffing you because of your sweater. We couldn't get the handcuffs um, and you were, when you were trying to move your arms apart. Your sweater was caught in between the, um, not the hinge, the, uh, oh, part of the hinge of the handcuff. handcuff. Okay, so you had difficulty putting handcuffs on because of my sweater? That was part of it, because okay. of me wiggling your arms. Yes. Okay, can you see? Me wiggling around when I'm on the ground in this video, or do I appear to be laying still? Well, you were not laying still. You were on your side, and the officers that are in front of you are blocking, you know, the angle a little bit. Okay, so you cannot see in this video me wiggling my arms around or moving while I'm on the ground, other than a slight twitch of my leg because there's people on top of me. Well, I'm testifying that I remember you <clears throat> us having trouble because of you moving your arms and the sweater, but. I am currently asking about the video, not your recollection. The video specifically. You said that you could see it in the video, me struggling while I was on the ground. Could you please point out where in this video, when I'm on the ground, I'm struggling? Um, well, I guess, you know, on the ground, um, that's why there were three officers on you, you know, trying to handcuff you. Um, so, you know, whether or not I can see you or not on this video, um, I guess I'll let the video speak for itself. Okay, so you cannot point out a place in the video when I'm on the ground that I'm struggling. Is that correct? Uh, you know what, if we want to watch again and we'll go through it. Okay. Can you grab the right, camera? Right there, yeah. The you were struggling. Right there, you were struggling. Do something. Uh, with it. So I was struggling when I was on my knees with my arms up behind me? Yes. All right, how was I struggling right there? Well, the way, the, the standard for an arrest is, if you're asked by an officer to submit to arrest, then you, um, you have to comply with the order. Um, any type of resistance, whether it be passive or physical, trying to pull away, uh, you don't have to be running. Excuse me, that is not what I was asking. Your Honor, I believe he's answering the question. I I don't believe that that is the answer to the question. I was asking how I was uh, struggling right at that moment. Uh, I was not asking about the, like, what you need to do when... Um, 
I'll just, uh, I'll have a relief objection. He can answer the, restate your question, Ms. Hager. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think I understand what you're saying. Um, when I was on my knees and I was praying with my mom, I actually prayed with my Yes, you were trying to pull your arms away. Okay. Um, how could I try to pull my arms away if they're being held behind me and I'm on the ground? Was I trying to pull them towards the ground? Or was I trying, like, can I, you describe that? Yeah, I, I can't speak for what your intentions were. Um, but yes, you were trying to pull them away to prevent us from being able to handcuff you. to grab onto her wrist, she pulled her hand away, um, and then uh, during the course of trying to arrest her, she was physically trying to pull her arms away from us, which is, um, in my experience, standard and typical for when people that want to be arrested, <coughs> their normal reaction is to pull them away from us and eventually hold them to their chest. Did I, at any time, try to hold my hands away from my chest? Well, you didn't have the opportunity. So but you the believe that that's what I was trying to do? In my experience, yes. When people resist, they try and pull their arms away and, and get into a position of more strength for them. In your experience, when people try to resist, do they um, generally fall to the ground when they're surrounded by 10 police officers, or would they generally try to get away from people that they're trying to resist? Uh, I'm sorry, resistance can take the form of, of anything, uh, except for verbal protests. Uh, you know, any type of physical arrest can be you know, what you saw here, somebody running away, somebody kicking us, punching us. Uh, it can take any form. Were you ever in fear of great bodily harm? Were you in fear of great bodily harm for your colleagues? No. Nothing for Thank you, Mr. Mr. Dunn. May this witness be excused? Judge, may this witness be excused? Oh, yes. The state is going to call Sergeant Joseph in chief to the stand next to Judge. I'm just going to shut this video off. The judge is saying that. He's saying that. Just right. Okay, let's just ask the My name is Joseph What is your occupation? I'm a police officer here with the city of Manchester. Are you a certified police officer in the state of Manchester? I am. How long have you been with the Manchester Police Department? Fifteen years. Can you please describe for the jury what your duties and responsibilities are as a sergeant of the Manchester Police Department? Yes, I'm currently a patrol sergeant. I work 4 to 12. I supervise 10 patrolmen within Sector 2. The city is separated into different sectors. I'm also the uh, SWAT team leader, so I supervise uh, 20 officers on the SWAT team as well. Were you working for the Manchester Police Department back on June 4, 2011? Yes. Were you working the same shift you just told us about, 4 to, four to midnight? Yeah, my hours are 2.30 to 10.30, but it's considered, okay. yes, 4 to midnight. Okay. <clears throat> what were you wearing on that day? I was dressed in a full police summer patrol uniform, so uh, short sleeve police shirt, pants, full duty belt, radio. Can you please um, tell the jury what happened on June 4th at about 4.45? I was returning to the station after making an arrest, and 
was turning onto Chestnut Street when I observed a group of people out in front of the police department writing slogans and words on the sidewalk, the retaining wall in front of the police department, as well as our building. And um, we have a diagram right there uh, that Sergeant Patton did for us, State's Exhibit 3. Would you mind coming down and looking at that and telling us um, where it was when you, when you pulled up? Were you in your cruiser at the time? I was, yes. I'm fully marked police supervisor's cruiser. Can you please tell the jury where one, one, one moment. we got to move mics. Can you move that mic back? We don't need it to amplify, uh, uh, officer. Just it, it's, it'll pick up for the for the record. Okay, I just want to. And can you please explain to the jury um, where it was that when you first pulled up that you first saw these uh, new protesters outside the police department? Well, it's not in this actual diagram, but there is an alley that runs. Uh, this would be Manchester Street. There's an alley that is uh, north of Manchester Street, and we typically come down that alley, which would be westerly, and then turn. Southerly on Chestnut Street, and then back on Manchester Street before falling into the the actual uh, Western. And uh, where was it that you were seeing that the, the people protesting? They were in front of the PD. They were in this area here. Okay. And from your position, did you say that you were able to see um, these writings on the on the wall and stuff? I couldn't see the writing at that point in time, but I could see that they were actually writing on the sidewalk, on the building, and on the uh, retaining wall. It wasn't until I was actually stopped in front of the building that I saw what was being written. And how many people would you say that there were? 10 to 15. And so what did you do after you saw these people outside the police department? I notified dispatch of what I had seen. I actually went around the block and then I stopped somewhere in here, parked my cruiser, and that's when I was actually able to observe that they were writing in colored chalk on the sidewalk, the retaining wall, as well as the building. And is that a crime? It is. And you have Oh, that's fine, thank you. Attorney Dillick, would you pull that mic uh, in front of the podium, or maybe if the record doesn't pick you up otherwise. Thank you. So what did you do after you saw this, Sergeant? Um, we made a number of arrests at that point in time, and after the arrests were made, went back into the police station to process these people that were arrested. And at some point, did you come back outside? I did. And at that time, did you have contact with a person by the name of Kathleen Anker? I did. And do you see that person here in the courtroom today? I do. She's sitting at the defense table wearing the black sweater. Can I please let the record reflect the witness identify the defendant? Does. Can you please explain to the jury what interaction you had with the defendant on that day and what you saw happen? Yes. Uh, we had returned outside at that point in time to actually document the evidence of the people that were there that were writing on the as I told you already, the sidewalk, the building, and the retaining wall. So detectives had come outside with us to photograph the evidence. So that's when we went outside to actually begin photographing from Merrimack Street towards Manchester Street. And that's when my interaction with the defendant began. And can you please tell us about that interaction? She was actually standing on some of the uh, writing that was on the sidewalk and in front of the wall. If you look at the wall, at the corner of Merrimack and uh, Chestnut. It's angled, so there was writing on the wall and on the actual sidewalk. So she was blocking the wall and the sidewalk, at which point she was asked, I believe, at least twice to move so we could document this evidence. And did you hear that? Did you actually hear her being asked to move? Oh, yes, I was right next to Sergeant Patty. And you heard him ask her that? Twice. And did you see, did you see whether or not she complied with his, with his order to move? No, she refused to comply. Um, all she wanted to do was get her point across. Regardless of what her point may be, when the police officer gives you an order, whether to move or not, you're quiet as a citizen to do so. She just she refused to comply at that point. So when she didn't um, comply with Sergeant Patty's uh, request to move, what happened? She was placed under arrest. And did she submit to that arrest? No, she did not. Can you explain to the jury? Uh, she began to yell and scream. Um, excuse my language, she yelled, get the fuck off me, started to uh, pull her hands away from us, and at one point, she actually, she starts to passively resist, so she lets all her weight come to us, so she's not cooperating, she's interfering with us, trying to make a arrest, so in order to protect her, we allowed her to go to the ground, and that's when we were able to place handcuffs on her. Now, you keep saying we, who are you talking about? 
Sergeant Patty and I, and there was some other officers there as well at that point in time, but it was Sergeant Patty and I directly. Was Officer Elston also assisting in the, in the handcuffing of the defendant along yes. with you and Sergeant Patty? Yes, he was. Okay. Um, before coming in here, did you have the opportunity to, to review some videos? I did. Okay. And were those videos fair and accurate of what occurred on that day on June 4th? Yes. And I'm just going to show you one of those right now. Um, and if you can maybe point out which where you are in this video, if possible, that would okay. be fantastic. We're we looking at uh, Exhibit 1 or 2. We are going to be looking at Exhibit 2, Judge. Would you like me to approach or stay here? Uh, no, you should be able to see. Are you able to see right here? It's right. It's okay. While you, while you guys are attempting to arrest the defendant, are you or do you hear anybody else giving her commands to stop resisting? Yeah, we're telling her to stop resisting when that occurs. And did she stop resisting? No, we had to actually force the handcuffs on her. Cross examine. Um, so, Sergeant Mucci, um, you say that when Sergeant Patty asked me to move, I refused and was more worried about getting my point across, correct? Yes. Okay. Is asking a question trying to get a point across? Yes. What point is asking a question trying to get across? Whatever your point was that you were making that you refused to move after you were given two lawful orders, you can certainly tell the jury that if you decide to testify. So I can't tell you what was in your head at that point in time. But you didn't uh, you didn't comply with two lawful orders, so that's why you were placed under arrest. Let me just caution members of the jury that uh, Ms. Eggar does not have to testify. That's entirely within her rights, and you may not draw no inferences whatsoever if she chooses not to testify. And you should disregard the officer's testimony on uh, commenting on whether she chooses to testify or not. That is her absolute right not to testify, and you may not draw any conclusions if she decides not to do so. Could you please explain how asking a question is getting a point across? I believe that was just asked and answered. Uh, move on, please. Okay. Um, so, you say that I struggled and tried to pull my arms away when um, you and Sergeant Patty attempted to arrest me? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you stated that I passively resisted? Yes. Could you please explain what passively resisting means? We well, necessarily weren't fighting, punching, kicking. That would be considered to be violent. Passively, yeah, you were pulling your hands away from us and then eventually released all your weight onto us. And we had to hold you and bring you down to the ground. And you can see that in the video at some point as well. So you were interfering with us trying to make a lawful arrest, and when you interfere in a lawful arrest, then that would be considered resisting. Okay, so you claim that I... Let me, let me give another cautionary instruction to the jury. The jury will decide whether or not Ms. Agar resisted. That's the decision for you ultimately to make. I'll instruct you on the law, and you will decide whether the facts that you find were proved beyond a reasonable doubt do or do not constitute the offense charge. So the court will instruct you on the law. So you believe that I um, purposely uh, attempted to fall to the ground? Yes. Okay. At one point, yes. So it is it is it reasonable to believe that the way that I was turned by Sergeant Patty could have caused me to lose balance? I don't remember you being turned. I don't know what you're referring to as you being turned. I'm referring, can I state what I'm referring to? Only if it's in the video, Ms. Hagar. It is in the video. Um, I ask questions about what's in the video. Okay, I, I was just asking if I could state what I was referring to. So in the video. Yes, you may. Okay, I am referring to when Sergeant Patty initially reached out and grabbed my arm, and then as you can see in the video, 
he um, moves his left hand upwards towards my shoulder. And you can't see that I was turned, but um, at that point he did turn me, so I'm referring to <clears throat> then. Your Honor, I guess I'd object that she is testifying. Sustained. Um, whether Ms. Agra was or was not turned is a question for you to decide, members of the jury, from the evidence that's introduced here today. Okay. Is it reasonable to believe that when somebody is forcefully turned around that they may lose balance if they were not expecting to be turned? I guess this calls for speculation. Uh, I'll, I'll allow the question if you can answer it. Can you repeat the question? Um, is it reasonable to believe that if somebody is turned without or forcefully turned without expecting it, that they may lose balance. I guess it would de determine on how forcefully you were turned, so I can't testify to that. I don't know. But it is possible, correct? I don't know without knowing how forcefully you say you were turned. I can't answer that. Is it possible that somebody could lose balance when they are turned? Um, like I'm. Sagar, move on. He, he's answered this question to the best of his ability. So you you said that as I was um, falling to the ground, I was passively resisting. And you also stated that I was struggling at the same time. Can you please explain how I can be passively resisting and physically struggling at the exact same time? <coughs> Well, it was at two different times. When you were yelling, get the fuck off me, and we went to grab you, you pulled your hands away from us. So there, you're struggling. You pulled your hands away from us. When, once we held on to you, you can see at some point that you have your knees up and we're holding your weight. That would be considered passive resisting. So in order to control you so you don't fall down and get hurt, we bring you to the ground, and then you're handcuffed. And then you were actually almost carried into the police department. So. Um, can, okay. I, I'd like to show the video, um, at least a portion of the video. walking up the stairs and to the doors of the police department as almost being carried in? No, not that portion. Prior to where it started, where you were actually, knees were limp and the officers were supporting you, and the part where I was actually holding you up before I passed you off to the other police, the police officer, that part wasn't shown. That part you did walk in, yes, absolutely. Okay, you, you stated that I was almost carried into the police department, so I just to point out when okay so when you say I was almost carried into the police department you mean I was lifted to my feet yes and then I walked into the police department correct you walked in at that point yes okay. but prior to okay thank you um, now you you did testify that I passively resisted as I was falling and I was trying to pull my arms away at the same time um, so as I already asked this, but I'd like to ask again, how is that possible? Because you did say that um, there were two different times, but previously when you were being directly examined, um, you stated that I did both while I was falling to the ground. I think you already answered that. Sustained. But I don't understand how he can change what he was saying. Uh. I, what, I've, what, I've, what I've ruled on this objection is that he's already answered the question. I've ruled that he has, so 
doesn't have to answer it again. You, you can ask your next question now. Okay. Um, did I attempt to run away from you? No, you did not. Um, did I? Um, did I attempt to use force against you or your colleagues, like such as hitting or kicking or biting or anything of the sort? None of those actions, no. Okay. Um, were you ever in fear of great bodily harm from me? Not necessarily, but if you had hit me, it certainly could have happened. But Okay. Um, were you ever in fear of great bodily harm from me against your colleagues? Again, if you had attempted to assault us, yes, but I already testified that you didn't. How long did I delay the arrest? I can't say for sure, maybe four or five seconds after the both lawful orders. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Say he's going to call Officer Clifford Austin.